Join us today as we discuss blockchain technology for compliance and managing risk. Broadcast. with Ian Worrell, the CEO of Encrypted Labs. Hello, Ian. Hey, Alexis. How are you doing? Great. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks. Um, today, we're going to talk about blockchain technology and compliance and managing risk. But first, um, help us understand what is blockchain technology? So, in a nutshell, what blockchain is, um, it's an emerging technology that is an immutable and cryptographically secure distributed ledger system, and that can be used in enterprise applications to increase operational and transactional transparency, uh, as well as reduce counterparty risk, add resilience to databases, which deters hackers from accessing information, and prove digital attribution, which is another transparency and auditing component, but can prove ownership, which is a cool aspect. Okay. Um, so how can it be used to reduce systemic fraud? Um, it creates transparencies throughout supply chains and financial networks to easily identify and transfer ownerships and fully track assets as they th flow through multiple stages of a supply chain or financial network. And currently there are so many different moving parts that it's really hard to track it, you know, different assets as they flow through um, all these networks within one supply chain or financial network component. So it really streamlines that whole process and eliminates a lot of the opaque areas, which is where a lot of the fraud occurs. And I know you and I had talked before about the capability to always have an audit log of activity, um, that that can never be turned off. Uh, I know as an investigator that that's a, a huge plus. Yeah, and it's actually done in real time, so you, don't, you can actually make decisions proactively instead of retroactively after the fact. So a lot of new data insights are going to come to market when this is implemented into a lot of systems. Excellent. So what is the competitive advantage of big chain database? So big chain database is a spin-off of blockchain technology we use in a lot of enterprise applications we do. And it has functionality and performance benefits compared to other blockchain solutions. I'm sure you're familiar with like the Bitcoin blockchain, which is one of the first movers, and the Ethereum um, blockchain, which was a move towards smart contract technology, which we may touch on briefly later in this, but don't want to go too big in it. But Bitcoin blockchain did a great job of validating the technology. However, it has many inherent issues such as scalability, storage limits, and lack of throughput, so speed, and capacity. So BigChain addressed that by creating a blockchain um, type system off of a standard distributed database technology. So it's linear scalable, so you're not going to run into scalability issues. It increases storage capacity from 25 gigabytes on Bitcoin to 48 terabytes with each additional node. So that's a massive jump. Wow. And reads and writes per second is exponential growth. It's moving from seven writes a second to over a million with just 32 nodes. So if you benchmark this against Cassandra, which is another major distributed database which Netflix uses, it takes them nearly 300 nodes to achieve those speeds. So you have a performance increase over existing systems on top of the benefits of blockchain technology. And BigChain DB is really the first enterprise level implementation of blockchain technology I've seen to date. In, you know, business speed is king, especially in transactional businesses, or mm -hmm. really any component of business is really based upon speed because it enables companies to gather data insights faster, identify faster, react faster, and, I mean, we can even integrate neural networks to pr be proactive and foresee instances of fraud. However, like, I'm not going to get into that now <laughs> because I know the complexities. <laughs> For a large company supply chain to work efficiently and optimal with blockchain technology, like Big Chain really seems to be the only current solution on the market that can actually be integrated and used in systems today and not in the future. Okay. Um, what direct use cases have you seen so far? There's a lot of use cases. We've seen applications in nearly every business vertical. Uh, we're working with companies to enhance their ERP platforms with blockchain technology to increase transparency in their internal supply chains. Uh, and we see a big use case with this with companies that handle GPOs through purchasing orders, uh, managing anytime discrepancies come up, 
that audits can be done automatically and seen before they actually happen or in real time. So it doesn't involve a big investigation team or human resources allocated to investigating that. Another big component of that is increasing security of critical information through the cryptography that's embedded in blockchain technology and distributing among nodes and managing scale as companies prep for growth. And another big use case we've seen is in the healthcare sector where it helps manage client information and patient history in a, like an orderly and highly secured fashion that's interoperable between different platforms and you don't need an expensive integration engine. So you think how many times there's human error or just error in general due to lack of information when a doctor is prescribing medicine and it's not seen by another doctor or the pharmacy prescribes something else. A lot of it's done on paper now or it's all different systems that don't work together. So there's a big use case for that. In the financial sector, Capgemini um, publicly announced they're working with Big Chain to develop a real-time loyalty rewards program. And I talked with them about this, and I think it's really going to revolutionize how customer loyalty programs work. I don't think I can go into too much detail on it, but it's something to look out for because it's going to be cool. And a really cool use case that's probably my favorite is it's a framework for registering IoT devices and managing payments on one system. So... Basically, there's a projected um, there's going to be a hundred billion um, IoT devices interconnected on a network or the internet um, by the year 2025, and through that, I mean that's a a massive jump. So there needs to be a way to handle the different components of that, from registering devices to tracking usage and data, managing that data, and then running payments. And it looks like blockchain can be the framework for that whole system for not only having everything from registration and tracking the payments on one system, but automating it and handling it in scale because nodes that increase the network and grow it can actually be deployed on each device because they're technically like little computers depending on what they are. So that's a, that's a really cool component of it. So, for, so I understand. So on the Internet of Things, you can add a node to each of the devices, which actually increases exponentially your scalability. Yep, and storage capacity and every piece of it. Right, you're processing everything. That's fantastic. Yeah, so it's not logging it down. So, I mean, I see that as being one of the biggest things. And it's something we're keeping a close eye on. We're ready to pounce on when it becomes applicable. <laughs> but it's still pretty early with the whole IoT. Right. And I know that you and I were talking um, earlier about, uh, for example, in procurement. So a lot of organizations have um, problems with potential fraud, for example, in procurement, right? So I, as an investigator, if you were to go into an organization you had no idea if there was fraud, procurement was always your low-hanging fruit, right? So we had talked before about the um, capability to do the three-way match, all right, between the purchase order and the, the receiving document and the invoicing and the payment of that. Um, but then even beyond that, you have the capability to do the smart contract to match that up to the components of the contract. Is that right? Yeah. So it refers back to like the interoperability of blockchain and how it can merge different systems together. And what it can basically do is when something comes in through you know, the purchasing system, I'm not an expert on blockchain, so I'll be honest. <laughs> but when an order comes through and there's a process, of like it has to get approved by the manager. Um, then sent over to distribution, simultaneously sent to accounting. They're all running on different systems for the most part for all of those different components. So sometimes, you know, errors occur where there's not a single source of truth. There's multiple instances. And if, the, um, you know, the values of any data set doesn't add up or match up at the current time, that's not often seen right now until there's like a batch process done at the end of the day, end of the month or something like that. And then companies, you know, every step that they take on the wrong information or stuff that's not matching up, it's harder to dig back mm -hmm. and solve it. So with this, it can in real time give you alerts if, if there's any inconsistencies in your data mm -hmm. and set alerts. And, you know, that helps a lot with you know, human risk, human error, and just overall human manpower that's needed to approve all of this stuff. Instead of having humans uh, have to, you know, manually approve everything, because they're really just following a data set like a business rules mm -hmm. that are prescribed to them um, and that can be embedded in the smart contract technology so that if it meets specific criteria and the data matches up it's automatically pushed along straight from the time the order's placed to payment to shipping all without having to have human interaction of course mm -hmm. a lot of companies are probably going to want a human component to start because they don't trust machines too much <laughs> but as it progresses you know every step time you take out um, a level of human interaction it in increases you know, security and reduces the risk for human fraud or human error. 
So absolutely. I, I've preached for a long time that uh, any manual process is uh, potential for fraud to occur. And the more you can have system level controls, which is what this would take care of, uh, the l it drastically um, reduces your instance of fraud. And so that's an excellent prevention tool, I think. The, a really cool thing too is the auditability of it. So right now it's estimated that like the global fraud and counterfeit market costs companies $3.7 trillion annually, which is just a massive number. And what's really surprising is only 3% of that is picked up by auditors. Sure. And that's really crazy. So as the blockchain enables a like real-time audit system and built-in auditing functionality due to the, have being an open ledger, where you can just put in your accounting algorithms right on it and layer in anything you want, predictive analytics, anomaly detections, to be able to act faster, act more accurately, and pick up on stuff faster and better than, more accurate than anything we've ever seen. So mm -hmm. it's really cool. It's a cool time. Yeah, I like it a lot because I could see how you could build dashboards for your um, exception reporting. Um, so you could have that and then build in workflows of who that needs to go to based on what those exceptions are. Um, it's, it's absolutely the, um, the top of the continuous monitoring program, uh, you know, what we're looking for. And it's extremely flexible, so it doesn't really matter what type of company it is, what industry, or what, you know, fraud prevention algorithms or detection systems they use. That can all layer into it to enhance the functionality. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you for a, um, for a use case. Um, would this be able to replace the core banking system in something like uh, the microfinance industry? Oh, definitely. So a big um, aspect of why banks aren't open, like we'll use Northern Africa for an example, because I'm somewhat familiar with that market. They, banks don't go over there because the cost to build an infrastructure over there is too expensive and pe there's not enough money flow and people to cover fees on accounts for them to justify an investment in that area. But with blockchain, you can deploy an open ledger system that's way more secured and it doesn't have the overhead infrastructure costs, so you're enabling people to, you know, have financial well-being in those places. Plus, to my knowledge, um, mobile banking through text is huge over there, mm -hmm. and that's how, like, really payments are made. But that system is just full of bugs and is wide open for fraud and hack. So you add that in that, you know, our smartphones, our older versions of it are getting sent over there, and connectivity from the internet and phone networks is strengthening around the world, like a mobile payment by using blockchain. It's not just the efficiency and security, it's how we could deploy it in under a year and really like change out a core banking system, but also like helping people while we're at it. It's not a pure just money play. You can make, I don't know, sure. out of soul. <laughs> so I think with the, with the um, mobile money, because I know that that's huge in um, Africa, I've done a um, number of work in that area. And it sounds to me that the telecom company would benefit from something like that as well, because that's their, un their underlying structure for the mobile money. Without a doubt. I don't want to say they could have a monopoly on the industry, but <laughs> it's a major, major competitive advantage where they could add in like secured payments and kind of be not just telecom, but payments, entertainment, and everything put into it. Sure. I like it a lot. Um, okay. So how can companies get started with this? So there's a bunch of different use cases in a variety of verticals, and blockchain is really changing the way that business operations are conducted, just as the internet did like 20 years ago. So since there's so many unique use cases of that, this technology, there's not a lot of out-of-the-box solutions available for companies where they can plug and play. However, the core platform and the technology needed to develop industry-specific applications off of it is ready to go. Um, there's a lot of companies already developing off of it, and it's really, you know, advancing faster than anything I've ever seen. So I recommend companies get involved, get their feet wet, um, begin exploring the technology so they not at an advantage over their competition and their market share by being a first mover um, to their business to increase their bottom line. You know, at the end of the day, the goal of companies is to make money, and blockchain helps them retain more internally. So in my eyes, it's an obvious solution. And a lot of the people around the world that I've seen, you know, some of the smartest people agree, like MIT and Stanford and Duke and a lot of, you know, major universities are creating curriculums around it already. Um, some of the tech industry giants like Microsoft and IBM, um, Deloitte, Capgemini, you know, I could go on and on about the companies that are getting involved in funding, um, blockchain research and development. And then over 50 of the world's leading financial institutions are in a consortium to drive innovation and adoption of the technology. And what's really cool is total investments, because I'm a finance nerd, the, the total <laughs> investments in blockchain in the blockchain industry recently surpassed 1.4 billion, 
making it larger than the dot com boom. So there's definitely a lot of people that are involved in this purpose. So my advice to all companies is that you know really wish to remain relevant and you know keep their market share or increase their market share. And, um, and we have all this at our disposal, and we love partnering with like industry leaders that can help us drive the development of specific use cases for their industries. And you know, we have even though we're based in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we, we're like the go-to for southeastern companies. Uh, we're since it's such a highly interconnected world nowadays. I mean, we retain our global presence still, and you know, we have active engagements in Australia, Europe, um, East Coast and West Coast of the U.S., and hopefully soon Dubai. That could be really interesting. So regardless of your location or anything, feel free to reach out to anybody at my company to start exploring and testing and implementing, and, you know, we love helping. Yeah, I, I think, you know, people that um, don't um, have a, a basis in uh, technology as their, their function, right, their functional role, I think the, the tendency would be to try to only have sort of IT-related solutions to go to with, but I really think it's actually bigger than that. I think that uh, the finance group could, if they have a pain point, then bring that to you and see if there's some sort of solution that you guys could come up with, or even um, marketing. I know that you and I had talked before about if you're a nonprofit and you need um, a really interesting and secure way to be able to uh, bring in those donations and have that uh, dispersed out. Um, there's really interesting solutions that you guys have around that. So it's almost if you have a position in the organization, you have some sort of pain point that you can't get a solution, they really just need to throw it at you and see if that's something that your technology could solve. So I, I think it's, to me, I think it's much bigger than just the IT guys. Yeah, definitely. And like what we see with some companies that come at us, um, that's how typically companies like approach us and engage with us because we're just the IT people. <laughs> but a lot of, you know, almost like pushback we get sometimes is, well, we can do the same solution like with smart contracts or like, you know, we can use this business automation program or something similar that already is in our existing infrastructure. Well, I compare that kind of how like the cloud works. Like everything's transitioning to blockchain and, you know, it might take another five years, 10 years, but why integrate something now that's on a legacy system that's going to be archaic in five or 10 years where for the same price or in most cases cheaper, you can have a system with you know more advanced functionality and running off the blockchain so it can scale and you're not going to have to replace it anytime in the near future. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think that's excellent. Um, do you have any last thoughts for us before we go today? It's a fun time to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ed, thank you so much for joining us on Fraudcast and um, have a great day. Thanks for having me, Alexis. Okay. Have a good one. Bye. For more information, contact Ian at info at encryptedlabs.com.